All right, so today what we're going to be doing is we're going to be preparing our model further from Mudbox. What I did do um, was I separated these into two different maps because I didn't like the resolution I was getting when I was doing a couple tests in, uh, in Mudbox. So I mapped, uh, what did I all map together? Like I put all this, 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 and this trigger. Um, I can't actually remember what I all put on what maps. I'm pretty sure I don't have any of these on this map. So actually, this just isn't the greatest map of all time. Uh, kind of disappointed in myself for making this map. That's what happens when you live in a dorm. Um, you had to have heard of that one. That was really loud. Anyways, so... What we're working on here is uh, we do have these separated into two maps. We have this map here. And we have this map here. So what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to put two different materials on it. So when we get it in the mud box, it can recognize that there are two different materials that we're painting, or two different textures that we're painting to. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to hop into the, um, the Hypershade Editor. I'm going to create two materials. I'm going to name this one Primary Weapon Map. And I'm going to name this Heat Sinks underscore extras underscore map always underscores underscores are your friend we're going to go ahead and we're going to grab the stuff that we know is on that extras map what was all on there that had this on it these no not those And not that. So I'm just going to go ahead, and if I try and drag these onto the object, as you probably know very well, um, it's going to only apply it to one thing at a time. What you can do is you can just right click and, and drag up. And we're going to shift click all this. We're going to do the same primary weapon map. And there we go. We have this all mapped out again. And I'm going to call it mapping me map 2 and then I'm going to go ahead I'm going to export all as an FBX and I hope that my plugin is actually installed right now. I'm going to create a new folder because I, it creates a bunch of stuff, especially when you start unzipping it. It creates uh, materials, folders, and stuff when you have um, uh, embed media attached. I don't, I'm not going to have embed media attached on it, but it's still going, it still might create that folder, and I just want to keep everything clean. So I'm going to say um, lpi10 underscore to mud box create that folder and I'm going to say example and the reason I'm naming it example is because we're not done here yet we're not done in Maya no nope, we wish we were but we're not so after that's gone ahead and exported I'm going to open up Mudbox alright and a depressing startup splash screen there now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to grab my tablet. 
And I use, I think it's called the Bamboo Create. I don't even know exactly what it's called. But you don't actually need the, um, the most up-to-date thing ever. You don't need, uh, you don't need an Intuos. I mean, anyone with an Intuos is going to tell you that you need an Intuos, but you really don't. I'm full of crap. And you can see we have this, uh, this high valence vertex. And this is um, probably the one that's on the front of our trigger. Um, it's not going to like this if we try and model it but it's going to be fine for, for painting. So this mesh um, would be an issue if you're going to go ahead and sculpt this, but we're not going to sculpt it. So I'm just going to say keep all because I know that um, that's the only error because I was testing this yesterday. Um, and there we go. We have our object and I've, it's important to, um, on your tablet, set up your, your buttons so that you can uh, in a way that you can easily navigate around it. So like I've got um, right click set to my right click on my pen. Um, left click is, um, I believe just left click. And then my first button on the bottom of the pad is, uh, I believe alt is the modifier for Mudbox. So it's, it's alt um, so that I can do this. And then I also have a button here. Um, no, that's middle click. I have the uh, the B the B button set, and you can see on my screen um, that the size is going up and down. That's the size of that brush. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go into um, the select tool, and I'm just going to to demonstrate what the issue is real quick with our model. I'm going to grab these items, and hitting H will hide the item, um, just like hide selection in Maya. Go ahead and select these objects and hide them because it's not time for them yet. All right, so now what I'm going to go ahead and do, you'll notice that I already have um, flat lighting on the model. Um, I have it set to flat lighting. I have it set to, um, to not smooth the mesh. Um, and that's just because I can see what I'm painting a lot better. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to try and paint on this. I'm going to grab my paint tool, my paint brush, and turn off stamp, um, make it black. You never use full black when you're ever doing any texture because if you're using full black, you're not, it's not going to reflect any light. And, um, you want your models to reflect the environment at least in a tiny little way. Like if you have lighting in there, especially if you're doing expensive lighting setups, you, you never want to actually use full black because you, you want some of those effects and um, and yeah, you just you just don't do it. It's something you don't do. So I'm going to grab that. I'm going to set my brush to a fairly large brush. And when I try and paint, it's going to say that I need to make a new paint layer. Um, I'm going to make this as high resolution as it's going to support for me. I'm going to call this, uh, it doesn't really matter, demo, whatever. I like Targos. You probably know that I like Targos by now, but I like Targos. I'm going to always paint onto a diffuse channel first, and then I'm going to change it later. Um, and now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to paint here. I'm going to set my strength to 100. I'm going to set my... Um, this min strength to 100 just because I, I want to paint um, paint the surface real quick and normally I'd go into um, to into to lay out flat into UV space but right now I'm just doing a small example to show you what our issue is with our model and then we're gonna go fix that back up uh, so I'm just gonna do a little painting and you can already kind of see what the issue is you can see that as I'm painting in here, it's not it's not registering well with um, this the surface here, these small um, angular surfaces, the the little triangle surfaces in here. It doesn't like them. It's it's not painting on them. It's not bleeding well to them. Um, and I don't know if they've changed this in new versions. I just <laughs> looked like a couple weeks ago and saw that Maya 2014 was out, and that's something that, come on, 
really, we're halfway through 2013. I just bought the manual for Maya 2013. Yeah, I know that they, they do release the year before, but last time they released Maya 2013, like, November or something like that. So, that was a little frustrating, but, you know, what happens happens, what you can do about it. So I've got a little bigger map here that I'm using, so this won't be as prominent as it was when I tested it myself. I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to set these back down. I want minimum strength zero, pen size zero. Um, just so I have that control, I'm going to turn on my stamp image, and I'll explain some of this stuff later. Um, but right now I'm just showing you the issue with our model. So. I'm trying to paint here. I'm doing my, my little edge trick here. Or not my edge trick here, but you can see it's not bleeding well between the, the surfaces when I'm painting. It's just not, it's not bleeding well. It's not going to bleed well. That's just that. Um, but you can see on these, these bevels over here, it's painting just fine. And I'm, I'm not really painting for, for effect yet. Um, with these bevels, it's not having an issue with. I can paint a straight line across them. But these, no. It doesn't like it. So what we have to do, is we're going to go ahead and we're just going to quit out of Mudbox. We're not going to save. Put away my tablet for a minute. Yes, I know, we love to paint, but not right now. I'm gonna drink some water. Sweet nectar of life. And we're gonna hop back in here. Um, what I'm gonna change on here, is I'm gonna throw in some edge loops. doesn't even want to do that. And the reason I don't use um, Mudbox's automatic support is or automatic system is because it sucks. <laughs> there's, there's no other way of putting that, really. Um, go ahead, I'm just going to do cut faces since I don't have good edge flow here. I want to throw these in here. That doesn't look good. So it's giving me a, a weird result here. Um, it's damaging my end flow. That was weird. So I guess I had some vertex normals that were backwards. Um, anyways, we're just going to go ahead and we're going to divide this up ourselves. Now, here, we're not going to worry about triangles. We're not going to worry about um, adding a bunch of tries to our model because this model is only going to be used for painting. The texture, because the UVs are going to be laid out exactly the same, it's not really going to matter. The texture is, is applied to this... Um, regardless um, of the fact that we're doing this. This might cause a little bit of trouble for us later, but we'll see. Um, don't want to cut through that. Back here, let's just go ahead and add a few. Here I am going to want to use insert edge loop. So I don't want to go over that. Throw a couple in here. And there we go. 
really neat. I found someone wrote a script that'll let um, the isolate select tool exit isolate select um, when you do that. Maybe it's in 2014, I don't know. But you can, when you use the isolate select, you can isolate, but it won't, um, or the, the command shift I command won't exit isolate. So you'll, you'll isolate it, shift I, but not um, deactivate that. These have plenty of divisions up here. That's small enough that I'm not going to worry about it. These we're going to be painting on a hard edge, so I'm not concerned about it. Um, these ones are a little different. You can see when I set the normals to face, it actually undid all my, my soft normals for that. Um, but that's not an issue. So now we're going to go ahead and we're going to try this again. Export all. I don't know why I didn't select all. And here I'm going to name it um, rifle underscore two mud box. Make sure that embed media is off because I don't want that folder. Then I want to save this in scenes as to mud box just in case something happens because my computer did crash earlier today I'm telling you the second the warranty expires on uh, on a Mac is the second that I mean not the Apple care so they couldn't have known but my Best Buy warranty expired and the second it went wrong oops that was not what I wanted to go into the second it expired was the second that my computer started crashing Conspiracy. Obviously, I don't believe that, but it is rather <laughs> perfect. I don't know if Best Buy is in on it. My throat's a little dry tonight, so you'll have to excuse me for doing that. Um, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to open, and it's going to bring me just like set project in Maya. It'll set the area. Keep this mesh, keep this mesh. Come on, you can do it. You can do it. There you go. Um, oops. Do not want to accidentally sculpt. That is what we do not want to do. Um, I think there's a way you can lock the model, but as long as you, once, once you're in these tools, like, it's hard unless you hold down the shift key which I don't have keyed to anything on my tablet um, you're not going to accidentally uh, sculpt anything Go ahead and hide these, hide that now we're back to our weapon I'm going to grab our paint tools, paint brush and let's just see what happens when we paint on these now okay we'll rename it later Scale this down, B button, paint along the edge, and it's not being perfect. You can see right there, it's not being perfect, but it's being better. Um, so what I'm, what um, I highly recommend doing before you um, you start painting in Mudbox is to in this version there's no option to flood paint onto a a model. So what you're gonna want to do, and like I said again, I've not seen the new versions, is I'm going to hop into my Hypershade, and we don't have to close out of Mudbox or anything. I'm just gonna select. Objects with the primary weapon. I'm going to my UV texture editor. My pen actually is is locked on one screen. That's another thing with your tablet. You might. It's probably a good idea to um, to lock it onto one screen. And the texture size I'm using, I believe, is double this, but it doesn't really matter. Go ahead, and I'm going to export this. 
We'll write that yes. And I'm going to select objects with this material. Polygons, UV snapshot. I'm going to call it something else. Um, I'm just naming it whatever I want to name it. I'm a boss like that. I'm going to open up Photoshop. And this is for my other project I'm working on. Portfolio projects, plasma rifle, images, out UV. This is one that I was I was doing the test on it, so you're gonna see us do that. Go ahead and open this. Toss in a new layer. I'm going to just shift F5, fill it with white. Um, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to just quick fill this on a new layer. With the color that we're looking for. Go ahead, select all that. I'm going to shift F5, fill with color, because remember we don't want to use absolute black. Choose this. Hit OK. And now we filled that with that color. Um, we're going to go ahead and we're going to do that for all the parts on the model that we want to fill with that color. Looks like actually muzzles on the other object. Shit. That's fine, we can sign that later when we go to export. No, we can't. I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to pause this, and I'm going to re-export because I made a mistake. Um, this muzzle here um, was included on this map. You can see they're overlapping. So when you paint on this, it's going to paint on the other asset. So we do not want that. That was just my mistake. Um, I'm going to quick um, fix that and come right back. All right, so I did correct that. It doesn't look like it in uh, Photoshop, but trust me, I did. Um, I just didn't re-export anything, but I did go ahead and change that. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to um, we fill the main um, part that we wanted to fill. Let's go ahead and fill some of these sections. Actually, I believe that these are also filled with the same color. Um, This part here, is a different color. I just want parts on the front here. What is this? So we want to paint that. And we also want to paint this. Looks like it has... Okay, so that's just the front of it. So we're going to paint those two objects. I think it was this, right? You can't answer me when I'm asking you. And this. I'm always tempted to use the G key, but I know it doesn't work bad. We can go ahead and we're going to save this out. And we want to save it as import base color. 
.psd with layers and everything, all the bells and whistles. Um, we're going to hop over into Mudbox. I'm going to go ahead and we're going to make a new paint layer on this object. We call it Base Import. 4096, OK. Import channel from PSD. We can go into our images, which this really should be in our source images, but I'm used to this workflow. And there we go, we've got some color on it. And we can turn these on and off, um, the layers in the Photoshop document, and that's why we save the layers. Um, and you can see now that's gone, so we're just going to go ahead and we're going to delete this because it gives us um, what we need anyway. We're going to delete that. We've got that white base. Um, we could use this to our advantage later. We could change this to another base color if we wanted to. Um, so we're going to go ahead and just hide that because maybe later we'll, we'll use it. This is our base import. I don't know what this layer is. This is probably our background layer that we, we hid. Tweet selected. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna rename this. And just double click it, yep. Call it base. Paint. And we're going to go from there. Yes. Let's sit differently in the chair. Um, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to hide these objects again. Are you serious? Are you seriously serious right now? I'm looking at my activity monitor and it's, it's using 45% of the CPU but it's not responding. And the system is just cranking up. That's just bullshit. All right. My day today. Guys, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to redo this up to this point. Fantastic. All right, so I've actually never had Mudbox crash on me before. That was a first. Um, I don't know if it doesn't like the model or just had a Photoshop glitch or it's just the fact that my computer is beyond its warranty. Um, I didn't think I had to save yet because we hadn't done anything yet. So we are going to go ahead and we're going to save now. Save scene as. We can go into scenes. To mud box. We're going to put a new folder in here. Mud box. Paints. Create. I want to name it paint underscore one. Not FBX. I'm going to use mud because we're just exporting channels from here. We don't actually need the file as an FBX. There's no need to triangulate it every time and have a larger file size. All right, so now let's select an object and see if it crashes. It didn't crash. How fantastic. So now we're going to do this again. Hide all this stuff. Do, 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 do.
And we're just hiding it. We're not deleting it. We're not putting it anywhere else. I'm just hitting the H button. All right. So, hopefully this doesn't crash now. We can go ahead and we're going to create a new layer, and we're going to call this one Scratches. Let's say OK. It's going to be a huge map. Um, I'm going to rename this back to Base Paint, and this one as utility layer because we don't actually know if we're going to use this or not. Remember that's just the white here. Um, if I wanted to flood the model I could. In fact it probably would be better to flood the whole model but I'm not going to pause again. Not going to pause again. <laughs> Go ahead and hide this here. And I'm just going to take um, my paintbrush using a stamp image undo that because that was on the wrong layer cancel it scratches layer so we're painting on that I'm going to paint pure white because pure white is acceptable and I'm going to go ahead I'm going to reduce this down to almost nothing to start with and now I'm going to go ahead and it takes a minute to get back into your groove of actually using this um, if you haven't been using it for a while, which I have not, but I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to say minimum size is 30%. And note that this is 30% of this. So it's not like I'm automatically putting it higher than this. Um, strength I'm going to keep on, on fully redoable. So what I'm doing here, I'm just adding some scratches. the edges. I'm trying to follow along the edge, but if I, I miss, it's fine. Um, this map actually might be too high of a resolution for this to really work. Let's try the other stamp here. Another stamp I like to use is this one. Yeah, that looks more like the scratch I'm looking for. And this, I'm just going to run along here, adding some scratches. When it does give me a little error that I don't like, I can just paint over it. It's not the cutest issue. I should really put undo command on my tablet. I never even thought of that. And what we're doing here is um, I'm just highlighting these edges because prominent feature, it's not going to be um, this significant scratches um, and we get back to it later I'm going to um, gonna ramp the opacity way down I'm not afraid to, to go ahead and undo this over here Trying to follow along. As good as I can. That angle was a little weird. When I sit up, as I'm trying to focus on this. And I went a little bit off, but that's no problem. Just gonna fill in here. So we're just dinging it up. This rifle has seen some better days. Um, I'd rather have a grimy weapon than a perfectly clean weapon. Let's see, I'm still not getting the best off of this. But it's not a huge issue we can fix it. So you can see now I'm getting back into the groove of, of how I want to be painting this. 
and it looks a lot better than the other side. I might go ahead and just fix that. So it's not consistent with the style I'm trying to put here. Although, see zooming out helped me a lot. Um, I can just tweak this a little bit. Add some extra scratches here. Front of the weapon seeing worse days. I'm just doing a little triangle shape here, like it got dinged. Go ahead. Make this bleed over a little better. This back here might have taken a few extra hits. So all I'm doing is I'm I'm highlighting the edge of the weapon, is essentially what I'm doing here. And like I said, I'm not afraid of getting it too too uh too dark or too opaque of a stroke because we're gonna ramp the opacity all the way down. I guess the bottom of the weapon should have a little more damage than the front. And then this over here, set this down on the ground and got it in like that. A little worse in the front. And I'm not worrying too much about this number one because I'm probably going to take it completely off the diffuse channel or just leave it slightly on the diffuse channel. Um, um, I want to have these bigger strokes because they do transfer over the edges better. Um, but I might take it completely off the uh, the diffuse channel, because where this is really going to make a difference is in the specular channel. Go ahead and meet this up. And like I said, I'm not too concerned if I go over the edge a little bit. Not going to be intentionally doing that, but... I quit baseball for bad hand-eye coordination, okay? And I think I got an award for the most injuries ever sustained on a team. <laughs> Let's just say that I had better days in my life. So I'm kind of glad I started with that other, other side first because I am definitely picking up how I want this to look better. Um, or how I want this to look on this side. And with this this pen, I really don't like it because the buttons are so far forward. I wish they put them a little further back where it'd be harder to reach because um, I end up accidentally clicking them a lot. I mean, not necessarily harder to reach, but I, I don't know. I really don't have an idea for, for how to fix it, so I can't really legitimately complain, but... Here I'm just kind of making sure that I'm going, um, I'm going against the flow here. I'm going, I'm stroking a little bit like this, not perfectly flat, so that when I get to this this really tiny edge that I know is in here, um, it's going to be crossing through it. And Mudbox is, again, the reason we're using it is because we can paint directly on the surface and cross through like that. So see there, I was kind of going um, a little bit with the flow more kind of cut me here. Go ahead and get go down on this. This took a few more hits. And here it's definitely this definitely took a few hits. This is the front of the rifle, you know, you set it down on something. Um, it's gonna get dinged up here. Fill in this corner here. Go ahead and do that. You can see when I take the opacity and I slide it down now. Oh, now that's not so big of a deal, but um, yeah, it's got a few scratches. That's that's it. Um, when I turn off the wireframe, it'll also be more apparent. But that's what I'm doing there. Um, I am considering going back into Photoshop and uh, 
plotting the rest of this model. Just because I am deciding that it's going to be easier than manually painting these. But I'll show you the alternative. Why not? It's not going to damage the integrity of the model. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to say mesh flattened UV space. And the mesh is gone. No, it's not. It's just a, a flat. This is exactly like what we'd see in Photoshop. There's this shape here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go on base paint, take the eyedropper, select this color, turn off stamp image, and then I'm going to I'm going to want to remember these settings um, because I don't want to, to change this too much when I go between um, when I go between the, uh, the systems. And the styles. I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to do this a couple times. Again, it's set up to only work on one screen, so I have to grab the mouse. And just do that. Better get a bunch of clapping because my my desk space is a little small when I'm uh, when I'm using the pad because it is a big pad and it's, that's part of the reason why I chose it over um, over uh, over the Intuos is for the price point it was definitely uh, the better option so I've got this I turned off the stamp doesn't matter if I have stamp spacing on or off. And um, this is going to be metal. Um, and I have a different solution for that later that we're going to see. This is going to be a, a white metal. Actually, I'm going to pause and think this out. I'm sorry, I, I didn't think out this video entirely all the way through. Um, so this is kind of a bad video for me, but... Sorry. I'm going to go ahead and pause and decide on my texture planning. Alright, so I did my, my texture planning, and I decided the whole model is going to be this uh, black metal except for the plastic parts, which are going to be a different color black metal. But we're, we're really going to, to take away from that just flat black the whole time by putting in all these, uh, these layers. We're going to have a metallic layer that's going to be another specular channel. It's going to bring out the metal, um, metal traits of the object. Um, we're going to have the pieces on top, which are going to be differently, the heat sinks and everything. The, uh, the tubes connecting everything are going to be a different material. So we're going to have some some differentiation within the model, but it's not going to be um, necessarily the most differentiated model. Um, so we're going to go ahead. We're going to resume our painting of scratches. Go ahead and grab our absolute white with our brush. Our size we had 0.26. Our strength was the same as it is. And this was zero. Min size was thirty point two. Okay. Back in business for this first part. Um gotta turn our stamp image on. So you'll notice I did say that I was gonna cover this later. Um my stamp image settings. Uh, I have it set to randomize 100% on the uh, rotation, but I don't want any of the jitter or resizing. Um, so I have that all set. Go ahead and I'm going to start get back into my groove here. And you might think I'm kidding about the whole getting in a groove thing, but I'm really not. Not painting some of my strokes here. My memory is 
nowhere near maxed out. I don't know why it's being a little glitchy. Probably because a new version's out. <laughs> this is just a show of conspiracy theories and technical issues. And lack of foresight a little bit. Yeah, that was my bad. The, uh, the texture planning really should have been done ahead of time. I think I have touch input disabled on my panel, but still trying to receive that input as clicks. Bam. hell is happening right now? This is the fail tutorial of a lifetime. Let me try unplugging and replugging in my tablet here. See, I kind of fill in these corners, something I learned from someone else. Um, that makes it look good. Alright. Whenever you use paint erase, you're using a similar stencil to what you're using to make it in the first place. We'll reduce the obviousness that you erased here. And then sometimes just going back over erase more than you need to and just go back over a little bit. Again, this is just to build out the, uh, the shape of the model. Even though we have a really good silhouette already, textures always beat models. Lighting always beats textures. You can have a really shitty model, like terrible, like I want to cry because I made this. And then you put good textures on it, and it can look pretty good. Now you can have a good model with bad textures. Come on, don't do this to me. It really shouldn't do anything. Let's see if it does. Well, would you look at that? So there's a tip. Instead of just hiding everything, maybe you should just isolate your model instead. And I figured because I was running into that at parts where I knew other pieces of my model were.
again. I'm not worrying too much about getting off here. I do want to eliminate where you can clearly see that I started a new stroke. Not that people like know to look for that or anything, but it catch someone, someone's eye. Now I can stop holding my hand so weirdly too, now that I know what was causing the issue. That'll help. Alright. I'm just going to continue painting along here. Bringing out my edges. That doesn't look very good here. I'm just going to undo some of that. There we go. That's more of what I want. Now the bottom of this gun, that's where it can take a lot of damage. Even though we've got that grip, notice that when we were modeling it, we made sure that the grip didn't extend to the bottom, so we'd have that texture difference. So here's where they're definitely beaten up here. This corner still some hits. You might even put like a bump map in there. Bring that hit out. We'll deal with that later. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to finish sculpting over all these edges um, on my own. Maybe I'll do it tomorrow. Um, then have the next tutorial the day after tomorrow. Not a lot of people are watching these tutorials yet right now, so I'm not too concerned about getting them all out to, to help you guys um, or to, to help anyone in specific. Hopefully more people start watching it later. So I'm just getting it drawn in. You can already tell. We've already made quite a difference in the model just with this texture alone. Um, what I'm going to do later is I'm just going to switch it over to a, a transparency layer. Or not a transparency layer, a specular layer. And it's going to look great. We're going to put on a, a layer later with, um, with the same stamp. We're going to make it a lot bigger. We're going to spread out the spacing a little bit so you distinctly see it. And that's going to be another specular channel that's a little bit more obvious than this one. Um, I think the tip on my pen is also wearing out. I'll replace that between this video. Um, yeah. that side of that a lot better. There we go. And 
That's better. Um, yeah, I think that's where I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to stop this video. It's here. And um, next time I'll probably have filled in a lot of these other scratches here. Um, not along this because this is going to be plastic over here. But along any surface that is metal, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to fill those in. And next time, we will start from there. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to save this. I want to resave the new iteration in our scenes. Save. It's returning an error over there, so I don't know what's going on, but it better not be something bad. Alright, I'm going to save here, and we're going to start off here next time. Sorry again for the uh, all the issues that happened in this tutorial, but it'll be better next time. Alright, thanks guys. I'll see you next time.